Welcome back everyone to another video and today we're gonna be going from this to this. So the first thing that we need is a bunch of animations. So what I have here is in my character folder I have a custom character and I have a bunch of animations. I have an idle animation, I have the pistol idle animation, uh, the rifle idle running and walking animations and I have three animations for my jumping. So for the jumping we need one that is our guy when he's trying to put his legs back on the ground. Then we also need a animation when he is in the air and also we need an animation when where he is jumping up uh, in my case my case you can see this is the full animation but it doesn't matter because this is only uh, the system is going to only use the half of it for him to just move his legs up and then it's going to replace it with the looping animation so first uh, let's create the blend space for the character to be able to walk around so let's right click let's go to the animations and let's create a blend space uh, make sure to select your correct character, uh, Skeletal. Mine is Walking Skeleton and I'm gonna call this My Dude Blend Space. Let's open this up and over here we can set up a lot of things. First let's go to the Assets Details uh, because here on the axis we can change the directions and the speeds. So for the horizontal axis th these are gonna be directions. So if you have multiple animations for uh, strafing and going sideways uh, here you could do minus 180 up until 180 so this is going to be a full 360 rotation available to us I don't have those animations if you have one that goes to the left for example then you probably want to place it at these edges if you have some going to the right side you're gonna place those at these edges I don't have those uh, so I'm just gonna be having straightforward movement and that's it uh, so I'm gonna drag in my idle and that's gonna be at the bottom now uh, as you can see, as soon as I dropped it, my character is idling. We gotta set up some speed variables in here. Uh, not the variables, but the values. And in the vertical axis, here you can see we have the minimum axis value. So that's the minimum speed, zero, is gonna be when he is going to be idling. And maximum axis value, uh, by default, the character movement speed is 600. So that's gonna be when my character is going to start running. So I'm gonna add those values over there. Let's drag in first our walking animation. I'm gonna place that in the middle. So if you would move this green dot up, you can see he starts to move as soon as we hit this mark. In my case, those are gonna be 300 units and that's gonna be his walking speed. Now for the running, I'm gonna drag that in and put it at the very top. And now if we drag this up, you can see he is starting to run once he hits uh, some higher numbers, 600 or above is when he will run full speed. Now to make life easier for us once we want to uh, apply the speed to our character let's name the variables that are going to be needed so in the horizontal ax axis the name is going to be the di direction and the bottom one for the vertical axis the name is going to be speed and that's going to be it that it will be needed in this blend space blueprint so let's close this now the next thing that we need is the actual animation blueprint which figures out which animation and when to use. So let's right click, go to the animations and let's create the animation blueprint. Again, make sure to select your correct skeletal. Mine is walking skeletal. Okay, and I'm gonna call this my dude anim bp. Let's open this up and here is the output pose and this is going to be the end result which is going to allow us to actually display the animation. Uh, we will have a bunch of those, there, there will be different. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to look for a thing called state machine. So depending on the state this is going to return us a different animation. So let's compile this, go inside of the state machine, you can see it's already running. Let's open this up and this now here we need to add some states. First let's drag from this, let's add a state and I'm gonna call this idle slash move since uh, this state is going to use our blend space and it's going to detect whether it needs to be running, walking or just idling. So let's open this up. So now over here we're gonna start very basic. Let's first let's drag in our blend space. It's now since we created this it's available for us in the assets browser. We can drag that in connect the pose over here and now this requires us to have two inputs it needs a direction and this needs a speed so let's drag from those let's promote them to the variables so this is going to be the direction and the other one obviously is going to be the speed 
Here we go. So we have those plugged in and technically this should be good enough. Now we need to actually populate these variables with some values because by default, as of right now, there isn't going to be any value in them. So let's go to the event graph. So here on the event blueprint update animation, we need to cast to the char character. So in my case, third person character. And the object is this try get pawn owner. So this is going to return as the pawn. Now over here, we need to set the direction and we also need to set the speed. Now let's begin with the speed since that's a little bit easier. So let's drag from this and let's get the velocity. So let's get the velocity and then from the velocity, this is a vector three, but we need a float value. So let's drag from this and we need the uh, vector length, vector length. And then this can go into our speed and our speed is all set up. Now for the direction, this is going to be a little bit different. So what we need to do is from the character, we want to get actor rotation. And then from the rotation, we can get the direction. So calculate direction. Then let's plug in the velocity value since this is required. And then the output float value can be plugged into the direction and this is going to give us the correct values. So now if we would compile and save this here on the right side, we can select the animation preview of editor. And if we give this guy some speed, you can see that he is starting to slowly walk and then he is starting to run depending on the speed that we have. And this is blending together quite nicely. There we go. So that's going to be it for the running as of right now. Very basic, but we want to hold different items in our hands, different weapons. So this thing is going to get quite a bit more complex. We need to know what kind of weapon we are holding and we need to know if our character is in the air. So uh, let's then set those values up. And as the third person character, we need to get the movement component, get the movement component. And from the movement com component, we can check if he is falling. Then this is going to return as a Boolean value. So true or false, whether he is falling or he is not. Let's promote that to a variable and let's give it a name is falling. Let's plug that in. So this gets set. And the next thing that we need is the top pose, uh, depending on the weapon that we are holding. For that, we need to first go to our third person character because we don't have a variable for that. So over here, I'm going to add a new variable for the character and I'm going to call this top pose index. Let's make this into an integer and let's make sure that this is replicated since, well, we are creating a multiplayer system. So this needs to be replicated for the multiplayer. For single player, this can be left at none. Now, uh, today we're not going to set this value inside of our third person character because first we need to add the actual pistols and the uh, rifles to the system. And then we are going to be able to set this, but we are going to be able to test this inside of the animation blueprint. So now in the animation blueprint as the third person character, we want to get that value. So let's get the top pose index. And now we can promote that to a variable inside of our animation blueprint and let's call it the same way. So top pose index. Let's plug that in. There we go. So we've set up all the necessary things that we are going to be using in this tutorial. Now let's go back to the state machine. So we have the idle state. We are in the idle state. But well, our idle state is going to get quite a bit more difficult. So first, what I want to do is drag this back. And instead of just simply running this directly, I want to use something called layered blend per bone. And the base pose is going to be my blend space for the running. So this is going to use the top part of my body. How to make sure that this does uses the bottom part is by selecting the layer blend per bone node. And here in the layer setup, we need to add one RI element to the branch filters. And we need to provide this with a bone name. Now to figure out what bone we need to use, let's go to our skeleton first and let's have a look at the hierarchy of our bones. In my case, I'm going to use the spine one since that's right in the middle of the character. So I can blend the bottom of the character with the top part of the character quite nicely by using this bone. So in the animation BP, let's make sure to remember this case sensitive. So the big S and one at the end. So this is the spine one. 
whoops, without that thingy, so spine, spine one, and the blend, blend depth should be used as one. Uh, perhaps if you have many, many bones, this blend depth can be a little bit higher value, but since I only have one bone up and down, and uh, then I'm directly in the uh, legs and in the arms, shoulders, and etc., so then I need to use a little bit smaller number for that. Now for the blend poses, this is where it's going to figure out what kind of top part animation it needs to use. And to do so, we need a node called, let's see, blend per int, blend int, blend poses by int. So let's plug that into the blend poses and this node can have as many as we want. Uh, same goes for this one, we can blend the multiple things together as well. And same goes for this one, we just simply need to right click this and we can add a blend pin. And now for the active child, child index, this is going to be our top pose index. So this variable is going to determine which uh, holding position we need to use. And let's populate now our poses. So I'm going to go to the assets browser. On the top one, if we are not holding anything, our ID is going to be zero. So we can use our breeding idle animation in the top one. Then for the blend pose one, I'm going to have a pistol. So I'm going to use the pistol holding animation. There we go. And the blend pose number two is going to be my rifle idle animation. Obviously, if you have more, add more. Uh, that's all I'm going to have as of right now. And this is going to blend our animations together quite nicely. But well, if we plug that in and give it a test, you can see if we start to run, give this guy some speed. You can see his arms are looking weird. It looks like he has a stick on his back and the arms are glued to him. Uh, so this is not going to work exactly exactly like we want it to. So because I'm using the idle position while his hands are next to him and he's not really running and moving his arms exactly like I want him to. So we need to reuse our blend space. Now to do so, I'm going to add another blend pose by, but not by integer, I'm going to use the blend poses by a boolean. There we go. On the false route, we can use this layered blend pose per bone. And on the true route, I'm just going to simply copy the blend space because, well, we cannot reuse this. You can see this, this gets disconnected instantly. So I want to use a new one like so. And for the condition, what we want to check for is that our top index pose, we want to check if this is equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, then we can run our default running blend space. If it's not equal to zero, that means, well, we are holding something and it needs a different top part animation. So we're going to make sure that it gets blended with the correct index. So this is going to be our final completed output. Now we can compile and save this. And now if we again give this a test, let's give this guy some speed to make sure he's running. You can see, there we go, he's running nicely. Let's add some value to the top pose index. Let's give this a index one. You can see he is kind of like holding a gun. So this would be the animation where he's holding a pistol. Now let's change this to be the number two. And you can see this is looking more like he's holding an actual rifle. So depending on the top pose index, he's going to change his animation. There we go. So we are all good and done with this part. Now let's set up some jumping animations as well. So let's go to the state machine, back to the state machine. And here we're going to need quite a few states because we want to do like a loop for the jump. So let's drag this out. Let's add a state and let's call this jump up. So this is going to be when the character starts to jump, then we're going to need another state, which is going to be, let's call this jump loop. So this is when he is going to be in the air. And then the last one is going to be jump down. And this is going to be the landing animation. And then from this one, we can go back to our idle move state like so. So we've set the routes up. So now to set up the jumping animations, I'm going to go real quick back to the idle move and I'm going to copy the whole thing because we're going to reuse some of this. So let's go to our jump up animation first. Let's paste this in. And what I'm going to do over here is simply delete the top part, all of it. All I'm going to leave is the blend poses by int and the blend uh, per bone. 
so I'm gonna connect that over here to the out result and for the base pose I'm going to use my jumping up animation so let's drag in the jump up connect that like so compile and save this and let's copy all of this now let's go to our next animation which is the jump loop paste this in connect this let's now change the jump up to the jump loop there we go and the same thing goes for our jump down copy this in and replace the jump up with jump down animation there we go so we've set up the animations they're gonna blend with the poses depending on the weapon we have in our hand now let's set up the transition rules so let's go to the first one when we go from the idle move to the jump up and over here this is super simple all we need is to drag in our is falling and connect that to the can enter transition then we can compile this go to the next transition which is from jump up to jump loop and over here we want to do something a little bit different what we want to do is we want to do a time remaining so we want to use the time remaining ratio jump up so this means get the time as a fraction of the asset length of an animation in the asset player node so basically how long has the character been in the previous state in the jump up state and then we want to check if this value is smaller then let's say like one second if you see your animations while you're in the air starts to loop or whatever then you might need to bring this number up or down uh, so you need to play with this number a little bit for my animations the one seems to be good so this is going to be the condition in my case so we can compile and save this go to the next transition from the jump loop to jump down and this one again needs to use the is falling variable but instead of using its exact value we want the not value because we always want to return true in the can enter transition so if we do a not then if this is false it's going to return us true and the other way around so this is going to work just fine then the last state the uh, last transition is going to be again our time remaining ratio so ratio for the jump down state so then we can again check if this is smaller than one so we give this a little time to do the transition and then it goes back to idle move state so i believe so we have no more errors nothing is requested from us we have all the animations plugged in all the states are running just fine so that means we can go now to our character select its mesh and here make sure to use the animation mode to be use animation blueprint and then for the class we need to use I, in my case my dude and in BP now if you would go to the viewport um, let's unselect this so if you compile this and you can see once we select this the guy directly goes to the idle position so that means that everything is just fine let's give this a final test in the animation blueprint because we don't have weapons we can't check the top pose so let's see is falling so the guy is in there and he jumps down awesome now let's give him a pistol in his hands and you can see he is jumping with a pistol and he's also jumping with a rifle so let's give this a try and as you can see we are jumping the animations are getting ran properly my arms are a little bit funny because i'm using the breeding idle animation so the arms as you can see while i'm uh, while i'm just idling the arms are next to me and they don't really move so that's why while i'm in the air you can see they're just moving just a slight smidge so maybe you would like to look for some better animations i made a bad choice on this one i might change this along the way but other than that everything seems to be working just fine and our character now can jump so that's going to be it for today's video a little information about how to create the animation blueprint how to blend different animations together how to figure out how to blend the top body part with the bottom body part and yeah like always thank you for watching make sure to subscribe to my channel join my discord and i see you in the next episode